Good morning. We are so glad that you could join us on this very important conversation at the 2nd of March, 2023. Um, we just ended the month of love, but I'm sure the spirit of care, concern is still alive and active in us. So spread the word to someone, remind your colleague, remind your friends to join this call so that we can all move as a team. 3.30 is a good number, and so we'll be moving with that as we give a chance to more people to join us. Why are we having this conversation? Life is already generally quite difficult and we are going through a lot of harsh times for a majority of us. And so we thought it was very intentional and strategic for us to have this conversation as we make an attempt to make life a tad easier by bringing convenience and information close to you. The idea is not to increase your screen time and flood your phone with more applications, uh, but really far from it, we are here to give you peace of mind for you to know that you and your loved ones can access healthcare much more conveniently than, you, than you've done in the past. And because we're also keen to push the agenda of prevention rather than cure, on the application, you'll be also be able to find articles that will help you uh, understand and learn more about different uh, ailments as you will choose from the topics that have been suggested for you. And that will help you to prevent and that will help us achieve the whole idea of prevention rather than cure. And on this call, I have an expert from our partner, uh, Smart, who will be talking to us through the whole uh, scope of downloading the application to the phone, installing the same, using it, and of course, sharing more benefits that come with having the application on your phone. I know we had scheduled this conversation to last uh, one and a half hours, uh, but we are mindful of your time, and so we'll try to squeeze in as much information as possible so that you, we allow you to attend to other things that you have that are also of value to you. So once again, thank you for creating time and coming to this call. Uh, for those that we are interacting for the very first time, uh, my name is Amos Wangila Makomboti. I uh, work with Zamara, and we I want to have this conversation again to just make people aware that we have alternatives to help you access healthcare on the comfort of your palm. So really, if you haven't shared this uh, with your friends, with your colleagues, uh, be kind enough and spread the love by sharing the link to them for them to join so that we can kick start the whole conversation as a team. I can see we are already 320 of us and I want to appreciate the efforts you've put in to make that possible. Uh, I'm buying a bit of time as we allow more people to join because I can see people are really flocking in quick and fast. Uh, for those who've been able to join, uh, you can see that I have the recording in progress. The whole idea is if you will have missed a minute or so of the conversation, you will be able to go back and listen in and of course tap into the much wisdom and the much value we are going to receive from our partners smart on this call this morning. So having said that, and as I see more people join, I want now to pass the baton to uh, my colleague. I can see some of us already have their hands up. I will request that you uh, put it as a, uh, a suggestion or a chat on the chat box. Uh, we have a team that will be engaging you on the chat box and listening to your concerns. Um, we will be using the chat box to uh, hear your question as well. And as we go, the questions will be answered as we proceed. So the time we have been waiting for is finally here with the 350 of us already on the call. Allow me to now invite Maurice Mwanza from Smart Applications who will be taking us through the conversation. For those who are meeting for the first time, like I said, this could be a very good opportunity for you to network and to get to learn more about Zamara and what we do. So as we go with the conversation, uh, I'll be throwing in a few things about, about uh, Zamara. But like I said, we are mindful of the time uh, and we will make sure we keep it as short as possible, but as resourceful as it can get. So uh, this juncture, allow me to now pass over to Maurice, who will take, be taking us through uh, the better part of the discussion. Thank you. Over to you, Maurice. Okay, okay. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Amos. And uh, once again, my name is Maurice Mandela Mwanza from our applications. And uh, I just want to take you through a short presentation where you're able to download uh, the Smart Access app it is the app that uh, you'll be using going forward uh, in terms of uh, checking uh, the virtual card because uh, SMART, the, part the parent partner 
is no longer uh, producing the smart biometric cards. So yes, smart is the company that uh, used to produce this uh, biometric cards. So we have seen there's a need in the market, there's a niche in the market, and that market is what we are coming to address uh, in terms of uh, the virtual card. So we will be able to use uh, different platforms that will be able to showcase, and that uh, those platforms are the ones that you're going to use uh, to access um, service at any uh, service provider that you is accredited within the family, uh, within the panel, sorry. So um, allow me to talk, to talk to um, a bit of uh, background where SMART uh, does and what SMART uh, does. So we are a customer focused uh, service provider. We ensure that uh, the information we get from our partners within the industry we are able to uh, incorporate that into the benefits in terms of uh, uh, the innovations, in terms of the changes they want. So that's what we ensure that we do. We also have a Pan-African outreach, uh, as you can see, the, the Pan-African outreach, which uh, we are in over 10 countries, uh, the latest being in uh, Mauritius. And again, we also have the icons where uh, we intend to be, the country that we intend to be, that is uh, includes Ethiopia, Burundi, um, Botswana, and other countries within Africa. So that's how we want, uh, want it to be. We want to ensure that um, access within the African country is well taken care of, that you can be able to use the smart virtual access whenever country you visit, as long as the smart is a open country. So that's how we want to be. Uh, in terms of uh, service, we have a guaranteed service levels of up to 99.6. So this means that in that you may um, set your foot in, then you're able to, there's a 99.6 chance that you will be built at that point. But in case of an issue, uh, because I know sometimes technology uh, tends to have apps and uh, challenges, so you are able to um, have a call center, uh, both working with Zamara and Smart and all the partners that we have, that are able to um, be seen at that service provider. Again, it is a tried, tested, and trusted solution with a growing coverage, as I mentioned, with uh, it's currently being used by over 1.2 million uh, members uh, in Africa. So that's how we're growing uh, the part of can access. Introducing Smart Access, the customer virtual access to healthcare, the app that does everything your medical insurance card does and much, much more. To download, go to the Google Play Store or Apple Store and download the Smart Access app. Once downloaded, register by creating a username and providing your telephone number or email address. A generated OTP will be sent to your phone or email address for input. Once you input this OTP, you can now proceed to use the app securely. Additionally, you can tag the app to your phone, meaning the app can only be used by that particular device and cannot be accessed on any other device. This is an additional security feature to safeguard access to your medical covers. The Smart Access app will enable you to get all your one covers in one place. You can see your covers both inpatient or outpatient and the same for all your dependents. The covers will be listed on the app and you can click on each to see the balances available. 2. Medical Cover Balances On the app, you will be able to see the updated balances for each cover. This will be updated in real time and you can see your cover utilization. 3. Customer Statements on the app, you can request to see your last 10 transactions or even a full statement of utilization that can be sent to you on email. 4. Virtual Medical Card The app will have your virtual medical card and you can initiate a hospital visit for you or someone else who is a dependent without physically being present at the hospital. To initiate a hospital visit within the submenu titled My Cover, you click to Initiate Hospital Visit. It will give the code on screen 
and then send an SMS on the same. This is the code that will then be given to the cashier at the hospital as authorization for the hospital visit. 5. Mapped out doctors, hospitals and other healthcare facilities. On the app, you can see different medical providers by location, specialty or even accessibility under your insurance cover. 6. Health Stories on the Go You can pick your health topics of interest and can see different stories curated just for you. All these features and a lot more are available on the Smart Access app. Download it today and have full control of your health cover. Available on the Google Play and Apple App Store. That was just a video describing uh, the process uh, for you to be able to download, uh, to be able to search the Smart Access app. So if they're in the respective stores, you go, it goes by the name Smart Access. Then you are able to uh, load that, uh, to download that, and then you are able to sign up. Then once you sign up, you, you'll be able to um, go through the different uh, ways that uh, you are able to register at your uh, account. So uh, this is the USSD I had talked about. So it allows you to select the language. Uh, if you're conversant to the three languages, uh, then you can be able to use any. Then you set a four-digit PIN and then uh, select the sec uh, security questions. And then you accept the terms and conditions and now, now uh, able to proceed. So on that, it also, uh, it has talked about different functionalities. So allow me to talk through the different functionalities for the USSD and the so for the smart uh, access app. So one of the functions can be able to do with the USSD is that you are able to initiate a visit, so a hospital visit. So uh, just to note is that a principal member can be able to initiate a visit for all the members within um, the family. So if you're a principal, you have a spouse and you have two children, then you are able to initiate a visit for each. Again, again you are able to uh, initiate uh, that visit. And when you have that visit code, then you can visit any provider that of your choice. And that is within the panel. Then they are able to now um, give that visit code. Then you are able to be attended to. So the other thing you can do with the app is that you can check member status. You can check the scheme status. Scheme status is basically if the scheme is active or not. Member status is how many members are covered and uh, if they are active or not active. And you can also check the cover balance and you can also request for a statement. So with all these functionalities, you will not now be able, to, uh, you'll not be, it will not be helpful if you're now calling the different partners, asking them for a statement or asking for a cover balance or asking for where our panel is, yeah, panel provider. So because that is all incorporated in this um, one app and one USSD. So that is that about the USSD. The number is nine one eight star eight nine one hash as it's in indicated here. So the second mode is that where you, you are able to download the smart access, which I was uh, talking about uh, initially. So once you download that application, then they are, there are two ways you can be able to register. So the first one is the use of member code. So member code is uh, given to members that have already uh, preloaded numbers. So if you have a, a phone number that is uh, already preloaded with the, within the medical industry and within the insurance that you covered, then you are able to now, uh, once you activate this uh, process, you are able to get a registration code, which we call a member code. And then you will now be able to uh, register using that code. So again, just to mention, if you have different phone numbers, make sure that the phone number that you're using is the same same number that you are accessing service with. Uh, because if you give a different phone number, then you are using a different phone number, you'll not be able to pros proceed with the process. So that's that for the number code. So again, the other way you can be able to register is by use of the new registration. On the new registration is the you can also proceed if you don't have a, a link that you've not received, you can go to sign up and uh, then new registration. You input your telephone number. And then when you input your telephone number, you request for an OTP. An OTP comes through. 
then the OTP comes through you now uh, need to input your details that is the username and for the username what we advise our members to do is that to uh, get um, the phone number as the that is almost the unique identifier within uh, the industry and even outside the industry so with that you'll be able to select 254 as the country code and then if your number starts with seven then it starts with seven don't input the zero zero Again, it also applies for the members with the 011. So you just need to ignore the zero, and then include the 254, and then you proceed with that process. So from there, it will be able to give you a request for the first name and the second name. Then you proceed, and then you are able, it will now show you a congratulation message, message. Um, verify the phone number. Uh, you can also uh, do the skipping part of the email address because it's not mandatory as we've already pre-configured it, so you can be able to uh, skip or add the email address. And then it will now need to verify the email address that uh, you've sent. So for a faster and efficient process, uh, you can skip if you do not have the email address within your reach. If you have the email address within your reach, then you can use it and then you can verify it because you'll not be able to continue if you don't, uh, if you don't verify that email address. So, on that, then um, you now be able to proceed and then you'll see different steps uh, once you are inside the app. Uh, again, we have introduced a factor where we are able to do the biometrics uh, login and automatic login. So biometrics login is whereby you're able to um, automatically configure the application to open using the biometrics if your phone is biometric enabled. Again, there's the option for auto login. So auto login, once you've registered, uh, it, will, it is just a functionality to be able to um, uh, log you in without remembering the password and uh, the user uh, username. So you can be able to uh, set the automatic login. Again, on the feature, what we have is that we are able to set uh, different covers and personal uh, passwords. So what we call these are the just secondary password but that you need. If you don't need them, you can remove them. But again, if you need them, you can be able to set the passwords on your end. So once you have successfully uh, logged in, uh, you will be able now to see these windows uh, that we have already uh, preloaded for you. The first one is on home, whereby on home, you are able to um, see different feeds of health related feeds. So these are health related feeds that you are able to read through. You can also share the feeds through different platforms that you're able to share. And uh, again, if you maybe need any other feeds, you can get in touch with uh, the relevant people, the Zamara people, so that we have that included in the feeds, uh, the health feeds. So on the second one is on care. On care, we have a panel of providers. So you are able to search uh, providers near you. That is if you activate the uh, geolocation. And again, you are able to search using different criteria that you've been able to give. The first one you can do is I can search by uh, dentistry. If it's an optical center, you can be able to search using an optical center. And then if it's an hospital, again, you can be able to use uh, to search via hospital. So you're able to do those searches uh, and to know which providers to access. So you just don't, don't need to start calling because you're not sure of any provider that you have. So that is the simplified way you've been able to do it. Again, undercover. So undercover is where you, now, you are now able to view the different members covered uh, for the family. Uh, you're able to view the virtual card and down under the virtual card, what is being displayed here, uh, the card, that card is now the virtual card that we've been talking about. So this is the only identification we'll now give uh, instead of now the physical card that you, you had uh, previously. Again, uh, just to mention, if you still have a card, you can still continue using the cards. So if you have a card, you can still be using the card. But if you have a dependent who has uh, been added to the family, maybe a spouse or a child, then they can be set up on the virtual. So uh, they, it will be a hybrid model operation whereby a principal can be on card and then the spouse or the child can be on uh, virtual access. So the card will be able to display your uh, different bio data that you have. 
that includes uh, the member number, um, uh, your members, the scheme that you covered, and then the customer. That is the respective uh, insurance being displayed. So under um, this card, uh, you can be able to initiate a visit, as I mentioned earlier, if it's a child and um, the, part, the father, father and the mother are in different parts of the country. Let's uh, say, for example, the mother is in Kisumu and the other parent is in Nairobi. Then you can initiate a visit and then send that visit code that is initiated to your phone number. And then you share it to the spouse who is taking the child to the hospital. So distance doesn't matter. If you have maybe a different location, then that is not an issue. So once you send that, they'll be able to display that uh, visit code. And then they'll be that we've given the search criteria. They are searched using that. And then from there, they now seek uh, registration of uh, fingerprints as has been. So we haven't removed the biometric um, fingerprint registration. So that is on the initiation of visit. The other one is where you can view benefits. Uh, benefits basically is uh, the allocation, what benefits are covered. If it's a uh, patient, uh, 50,000, for example, then that is increased. Then we do real-time upgrades. So you're able to see if uh, utilization is there and then the balance and allocation. There's also the other uh, fourth part, which is uh, more options. So under more options, we have two different modes that you can be able to do. The first one is that you are able to request a statement and the statement is shared to the respective email address that you had configured. So the second one is where we have uh, the permission member visibility. And for permission member visibility, this is a functionality that we have included within the app, such that if uh, we have a principal spouse and two children, then a principal can be able to give the spouse um, right. And then once that spouse is given that right, then they have the same um, rights as the principal. So they're able to now view all the members covered, uh, initiate a visit for anybody within the family, and then uh, view also uh, the scheme start and then this, the scheme start uh, cover periods. So this also i uh, like to mention that if you have a spouse uh, or a children that are of age and are have a valid phone numbers and uh, uh, a smartphone, then again, they can still register. So they just need to go to new registration, follow the prompts, then the KYC comes to our end and then it is uh, approved automatically uh, in an hour's uh, time or less. And then they are now able to see their own details. So if the if someone, uh, maybe three family members downloads within the same family, and they do, they have not been given that right permission member visibility, they'll only see their details only. So they'll not see any other detail. So the principal, once he or she initiates that uh, permission, then they are able now to see uh, the different functionalities. The next one is just uh, uh, an availability of uh, the providers within you. Providers, uh, you have the capability to see uh, the nearest provider. And also, if you click on the details, you should be able to see a phone number, have a valid phone number that is selected and an email address. So that's, that's that on that. So again, um, this is just a sample of how the card looks like. So once you are at the cover, you are able to add account and then you are able to link the account successfully then it will be able to display to you um, um, the cover that you have again a point i'd like to mention is that the smart access app can be used within uh, different insurance industries uh, that is if a spouse works for a, a company a and the principal works for a company b then as long as the phone number has been updated on uh, the both covers then you are able to see uh, the different covers and able to manage uh, the different covers within the same application. So that is how we've ensured that smart app uh, is uh, convenient and easy to use. So yeah, again, what I'd like to mention is that ensure that you have uh, the phone number that uh, you'll be using. And uh, for the new additions within the industry, uh, the unique identifier we've also included is the family number, the, member number sorry the phone number and the email address so if you are you you're being asked for a phone number and an email address 
uh, please or share that so that you're able to enjoy uh, this fast and secure way of access uh, the providers. Yes, and here is where you have, um, you've now initiated our visit code, a principal has initiated a visit code, and then um, you have shared that visit code or you have visited a provider with that visit code. So you are able to give that visit code a one. Uh, so if you give the visit code, then they will be able to search using that visit code and then displays your details. So if it's the first time, then you register fingerprints and then you proceed from there. Uh, again, we have different functionalities that we have uh, within the provider's end. Uh, we are able to search by fingerprint. Uh, search by fingerprint is a functionality that we have included, such that if you visit um, a provider, uh, for example, a case in point is uh, Aga Khan University Hospital, then the first time they, they use uh, the search criteria, either the member number or the provider code, um, and then they bill you successfully on that point. Yeah. If they happen to send you to different regions, I mean, different points of service, uh, maybe uh, radiology or scan or pharmacy, then that cashier at that different point can be able to search by fingerprint. So they just need to click the search by fingerprint and then um, your details will appear and then they proceed with the billing. The last and the part that you're able to use is the extra search options. So the extra search options is a functionality that we have included uh, to enable uh, cashier have um, ease of use of the system, such that they are different criteria that are given, the first one being uh, the phone number, the member number, the member name, and uh, the ID number. So we've given those four additional criteria for you to be able to, um, for the provider to be able to search you with. So if you don't have that, or in case of an emergency, you've lost your phone, then you just need uh, to visit the provider, and then you can be able to uh, view uh, the services and access services as has always been. So oh, at this uh, point, uh, this is where you, for the very, very first time, an OTP uh, will be sent to the principal's phone number, and then that principal will have to share it to the cashier, uh, so that you verify, and then we're now able to proceed with uh, the registration of fingerprints. So this is a second layer of authentication that we did not have initially, but we thought it wise to be able to include it so that you are, uh, the principal is aware of any service being initiated and any service being um, initiated for the family members that are covered within the, uh, within the family. So once the um, OTP is received, it will be verified, and then the next process will be now registration of fingerprints. So registration of fingerprints uh, happens after uh, you have given that OTP. So for guardians, then they will have to, for guardians, they will have to accompany uh, their uh, children that they have been left with for registration of fingerprints. Uh, we are talking about those who are less than five years of age. So if you have five, year, five years, you have a child who is five years and below, then you have a guardian or a parent, a company, then they register the fingerprints on their behalf. But again, if they are uh, above five years, they can be able to register fingerprints and then uh, access service. So again, with the, after um, that short presentation, it comes to the end, so maybe we can have the question and answer that uh, was being displayed so that we are able now to uh, answer any question that you may have. So, thank you, Maurice, for that comprehensive uh, uh, moment you've taken us through the application and some of the advantages we will be enjoying while using the application. We have a number of questions that have come to the chat box and uh, allow me to just read them out as we go. Um, the first question that has come is, why is the OTP taking more than four hours and yet you need to use it immediately to access the smart app? Okay, so on the issue of OTP, 
uh, we have had a few of uh, challenges, but we have worked to ensure that we have resolved the issue of uh, OTP downtimes. Uh, because when a downtime happens, uh, it means that uh, now you now you are now able to use uh, the fingerprint mode of access. So the inconvenience to this it will be now uh, is shifted to the first time users because you'll have to verify using the OTP. But again, we have ensured that we have this monitored and that it is addressed in the shortest time possible so that uh, we don't have downtime uh, on the same OTPs. So that is something that we've been able to pick it up and uh, address it successfully uh, going forward and also have dedicated personnel uh, within the, uh, our system so that we ensure that it is up and running. Thank you for that uh, question. The next question that came up is, can I have the phone up on multiple phones? Okay, so you can have uh, the app on multiple phones, but again, each time you log into a different phone, an OTP will have to be uh, generated for you to be able to verify that uh, particular device. So you can have it as long as you have uh, the original uh, phone number that you use. You will be sent there and then you need to register. I mean, you need to verify the device. Uh, the next question is um, How can my dependents access medical smart access without having smartphones given? They are at a rural home, whereas I'm stationed in Nairobi. Okay, so for this, what we have is that uh, as long as we have a smart install provider within that region, then we have introduced different modes of access whereby um, cashiers and providers can be able to use to search. So what you just need to do, you need to give uh, the unique identifiers that I had mentioned earlier. That is the member number, uh, phone number, ID number, or uh, member name. So if you have those um, configured on the system, uh, and then they can be able to use those as a different search criteria so that uh, they are the access service. So those are the different modes of access we've also introduced, despite having the USSD and also despite having the smart uh, access app. Thank you for that. Um, there's a good suggestion here. Uh, one, to include a search button on the home page, and two, a suggestion to use the QR code instead of the auto and pin because messages flood our phones. So we take note of uh, those suggestions and we really appreciate for them. This is one of those platforms where we use to get feedback. So we appreciate that feedback. And um, as Morris will tell you, we are working to ensure that the application works uh, for you and that all the suggestions we bring in will be considered uh, and more uh, future updates will incorporate some of those. So thank you for uh, that uh, suggestion. There is also a concern from a member who is using a Huawei device. As we are aware, um, the Huawei device does not support Google Play Store. And so he's asking uh, what happens for members who are using the Huawei device. So this has also come from our previous forums as a suggestion from members. And uh, the team on the back end is working day and night to find a solution to that. And so as soon as this is available, we will notify you through your HRs, uh, as well as through other channels that we'll be using to communicate to you. So again, thank you for that uh, feedback. And um, I'm moving to the next, there was a similar one related to that about the Huawei app, which I have already commented on. Um, uh, I can see a bit of feedback regarding the video that there was no audio, and I apologize for that. That was a bit of a glitch. Uh, we will be sharing the video with yourselves together with this presentation for your reference uh, as we go. Um, there's a question here, uh, Maurice. I am covered under UAP, but in the Smart Access app, it shows that I am under AR, who is my former employer. I can't see much information on my account details. Approval status is showing pending. Could you please address that? Okay, uh, we'll be able to address that and then you'll be able to see your cover in the next uh, uh, 30 minutes or less. 
Again, what we are, we are, we are doing is that we are uh, using the phone number as the unique identifier. So if that had previously been loaded in your previous employer, then it should be able to show, but status with the inactive status. So that is how the unique identifier for the phone number is working. Uh, should you have additional challenges, uh, we will request that you get in touch with Zamara. We'll be sharing the contact details to do that, and we will be able to come through and assist you as well. Uh, the next question is, uh, where is the email verification done from? The email verification uh, is done through um, an OTP being shared to your email. So if you select the option for email verification, then you must have access to your email. So if you have to select that uh, functionality, then make sure that you have access because you cannot proceed if you have not verified the account. So either uh, use their phone number or email. But what I ad advise our members to use is the phone number. Unless you have a quick, real quick access to that, then uh, you can be able to access it and proceed from there with the registration. The next uh, question is uh, related to what you just answered previously, that the member has been trying to uh, sign up, but he, he can't receive the OTP on the phone. So we'll, I'll be sharing contact details where you can get in touch with us and we'll be able to walk you through that. But Maurice, you can add uh, on that. Yes, thank you, Amos. So again, uh, what you need to ensure is uh, you need to ensure that you have not blocked promotional messages from Smart. That is another challenge that we have encountered and uh, gotten feedback from. So you'll, uh, you'll find that members have been able to block the smart uh, SMSs. So if you block the smart SMSs, then you will not be able to uh, get those OTPs. Again, just uh, dial uh, follow up with, the, um, with your service provider so that you're able to uh, do the unblocking of uh, smart SMSs or alone, if you don't want any other promotional messages. Thank you. Great, another concern from David, he says, for sign up, I thought national ID number is the best and the most unique identifier and not the phone number. So he's asking if it's possible for him or for members to use the national ID as their unique identifier instead of the phone number. Okay, that is a uh, good feedback again. So it, uh, for now, what we have incorporated is the use of the phone number and uh, email address because also those are the unique cases that you're using. Again, the idea that you're bringing in is that to use that phone number that you're using, to be able to link you through the different um, insurance companies that you may, you may be covered under. So if you have uh, one person working under a uh, different company A and then the other one under B, then they are able to um, register and see the different covers and manage the different covers within the same application. But that is a good suggestion. I will pick it up and then you can be able to see uh, in the future as an inclusion for the same. Thank you for that feedback. Great. So the next one is uh, how about for a case where a member code was sent and not able to complete the registration process still? Okay. So if you have a member code, another thing I should have mentioned about member codes is that uh, if you have two or three families covered within uh, a cover, then you are receiving at least uh, three SMSs, one for the spouse, uh, principal, and then the other for the child. So in this case, if you have, if you receive that, make sure they use the one that is calling you by your name. That is the one for the principal. Uh, we've had uh, different cases whereby people, are, uh, different members are using uh, code sent for the dependents, and then that uh, results to them to seeing different information on their cover. So if you again receive a code and then you're not able to complete the registration, there's no need to worry. Just proceed to the new registration and then follow those prompts. Because I had mentioned there are two ways of registration. One by use of member code, two by new registration. So if you have that challenge, please proceed to the new registration and then the process will now be seamless and up to the end. 
Thank you. In the case of a spouse having a different underwriter, how does someone add the second cover to the smart access app? Thank you for that. Uh, the way you need to add is to ensure that your phone number is added to the different underwriter covering uh, both of you. So the phone number is the unique identifier. And then once that is added and activated for Smart Virtual, then you just need to link account again and then can you add an email later after registering on the smart access app uh you cannot add an email once you have already uh, registered but you can share that email for updates on our backend you can share that email through the respective underwriters uh, so that uh, you are able, we are able to configure it and uh, also share the automated monthly statements. So once you have registered, you are not able to add an email. But again, it's a feedback that we have received. So we want to see and incorporate that addition of an email address. Uh, and again, we don't want uh, so much uh, editing of details. So that is what we are trying to avoid. But again, that is good feedback. We'll try and see how to be able to incorporate uh, the inclusion once you're already registered and or signed up. Thank you. Uh, Maurice, there is a, a very good concern from Emily uh, who says, what are some of the measures you put in place to keep hackers away from accessing personal information, including the spending bills? I think this is tied to the data protection uh, concerns. Okay, so the data protection uh, law is very clear and it's very wide. So again, as a company operating within uh, Kenya, we are governed by that uh, law, particular law. And what we ensure is that uh, we have met the criteria in terms of data protection. So there are different criteria of evaluation that you need to prove that uh, you have met the different security uh, for data handling and we, have gov we are governed to that. And we ensure that we aligned to that data protection law. So that should not worry you in terms of uh, data protection. Uh, I don't think we have really addressed the question directly. The question was how, what measures have we put in place to keep hackers away from accessing the app basically? Okay, okay. so my response to this will be um, hackers try to access any system. They, they may try to access any system uh, within, uh, as long as it's a system, then hack, and a hacker may try to access. So what we have done is done, we have different levels of encryption. I don't want to go into much details um, about the, the hacking and the data pro protection issue, but uh, what we have ensured that we have done is that uh, for a hacker to be able to access your information, they will need at least one unique, one or different unique identifier. So for that, we ensure that uh, the encryption for the different uh, data that you receive is encrypted and stored in our cloud, which is again secured by uh, the Oracle. Uh, uh, Oracle, and it's uh, the encryption mode is of a very very high level. So that's how we ensure that the, uh, your data is not um, accessed through uh, hacking of uh, hacking. okay so uh, there is also a concern from evans who says um he's gone to the search option and when he clicks on search for providers near him he's not able to see anything so he's asking if that option is actually working uh thank you for that we can check on that uh, feedback and that's a good feedback so we can uh, be able to check and then uh, should be able to be rectified in the next update that we have so that's a concern we not to thank you for that feedback. maybe to add Morris, i've also gotten the same concern from a, a number of members and how we have resolved is members are searching uh, for hospitals near them when they have not given the application access to their location 
So until you allow the application to be able to access your location, then you'll not be able to see any results when you search on the application. So as a, an attempt to solve the issue, make sure when you go to your settings under the app, you give access to your location. Then that way uh, we will be, you'll be able to see um, the providers near you. So feel free to engage us if the issue persists, even after attempting that and we'll be able to help you to resolve the issue. Is it possible uh, for a minor to access services uh, if taken by a guardian without requiring the presence of the principal member for fingerprint verification? Uh, let me just take that again. Uh, is it possible for a minor to be attended at a facility if taken by a guardian without requiring the presence of the parent for fingerprint verification? Okay, thank you for that. Uh, so the, the unique identifier that we have within the industry and how we've been doing it is the use of biometric uh, identification. So by biometric identification is that there must be a fingerprint registered. So what we advise our members is that uh, if you have a minor and uh, they have just been onboarded onto the medical uh, cover, the advice we give to our members is that they need to register either the uh, father or the mother or again, if there are uh, parts away and they are not able to register, then you can have uh, your house manager register because uh, in case of any any illness, then the house manager will be able to take you through, to take the child to the provider or to the hospital. So again, you can have the registration to um, to the guardian or to the other ones. So we cannot do away with the fingerprint registration. It's a security measure to also have uh, fraud, fraudulent activities within the industry. I can see more questions coming on the chat box. We appreciate your feedback and especially are keen to know what the challenges you are having for us to help you resolve the same and enjoy your seamless experience. So I, I'm just scrolling through the questions. I see some of them are tied to what has already been answered. Um, okay. Uh, if someone asks if we could do a training for those trying to access services using the USSD code, uh, that had already been done. Uh, if you joined a bit late, we'll be sharing the recording of this for you to be able to uh, review and uh, access the same. But we are also happy to assist you at a personal level uh, by asking you to get in contact with us. Uh, someone asks, how do I add my dependents on the application? Okay, uh, different, uh, if you have a dependent of uh, you get a spouse, then the addition to the cover is through the respective insurance company. So make sure that you share the details uh, in good time so that uh, they are onboarded and added to the cover. Again, uh, we have reduced the TATs in terms of additions to the cover. And you'll realize that uh, initially, sometimes cards could take longer because you needed a physical card to access different providers. But for now, the smart access, then you are able to have a reduced TATs in terms of onboarding. And then once that is done, then you're able to access service uh, within the uh, panel of accredited providers for the industry. So we previously got a challenge where members were saying those who are using Huawei device were unable to access the application on the Google Play Store. And Alan has come through for them. So he says, you can use the GSpace app to access Google services if you have a Huawei device. And he has actually gone ahead to share a link through which you can be able to access that GSpace app to be able to download the uh, smart access app onto your phone. So feel free to use that as well. And uh, that is very helpful, Alan. Uh, as we proceed, uh, this is a very interesting question. So why is the app, uh, why does the app have a three star rating in place? So this is interesting, Maurice. Why does the app have a three-star rating? Well, um, with the rating, then I can, what I can talk about the rating is that uh, different people um, have encountered different issues. And again, uh, during the start, that's where we had a few of the challenges. So again, we never had uh, phone numbers pre-configured. So members will get a few challenges here and there. 
in terms of trying to register, some have registered, and then um, uh, others are acting, appearing as pending. So for now, you should be able to see uh, that in a, a positive and accelerated way. So um, the issue is about uh, registration and also being able to see successful details on your cover. But we shall see uh, posit too much positive on that again. Before. Thank you, Maurice, for that. Um, I'm just scrolling through to see if we have any other unique question apart from the ones we've already answered or related, related to the same. Uh, in the event that you are out of phone network coverage and your dependent is at a facility seeking medical services, you're not able to initiate the visit. How can they be assisted to access services? Uh, thank you. So for this, if you are out of coverage, then they just need uh, your dependents or yourself just need to visit the service provider. And then once you visit the service provider, we have given them the different such criteria. So you're not being convenient uh, for that. The different such criteria will allow you to um, be searched using those criteria. That is the phone number, member number, ID number, or member name. So once you have that, you can be able to register and access service. I thank you for that answer. I have a question. Share hospitals that accept the card. Uh, this is a question from Daniel. He would like to know the hospitals that accept the card. Uh, this that's okay. We can uh, have that list shared through uh, the the HR. So we'll be able to share that list to all the partners, and then they can be able to you can be able to access the list through your HR. So that will be shared. Let me just add that we have people from different groups on this call, and uh, for the different groups, uh, they are covered under different writers. So we'll be sharing through your HR the panel list uh, that you are able to access through your underwriter and you can access the same through the HR to know which hospitals you can go to. But in addition to that, the application allows you to see hospitals next to you where you can access the application. So when you go to, uh, uh, when you go to care and search for hospitals near you having given access to the app to see your location, it will give you suggestions of hospitals next to where you are. That includes both the distances and you're also able to open the map to navigate because it's linked to the uh, to the map. So I think we've basically gone through um, most, if not all, the questions that came through. Uh, and I appreciate that. Unless there is one more burning before we close the session, I'm just giving us one more minute. I know we are way behind schedule. Uh, so let me just see if we have any other question that will come through and we're able to close at that. Uh, another related question is how long does it take for the request to be approved? Okay, we ensure that uh, the longest it can take is 24 hours. But again, if you have challenged that, you can uh, reach us through the different uh, uh, channels that we have, the WhatsApp uh, channel through the Zamara to the Smart, and then can be able to ensure that that is done. But we ensure that uh, as soon as that appears, then it is run through our backend system and then you're, it's approved. And then uh, it's, the status moves from pending to now uh, viewing the cover, different covers that are covered within the family. Thank you, Maurice. So we are here to assure you that Zamara cares about you and is concerned about your medical well-being as well as the other services that we provide to you. And so on the screen now is the contacts you can use to get in touch with us should you be stuck for whatever reason. Uh, we have on my left the call center number, which is available 24-7. Now, we have said this over and over again, that we have specifically uh, placed medics on the back of these phone numbers to be able to assist you when you are either at home and have an emergency or at a facility or you have a general inquiry about either how to use the uh, smart access app or any other question related to your medical card. Uh, so should you have any issue, any concern, any feedback regarding your experience at the point of service, feel free to call us through that number. Uh, in addition, 
Uh, on the right of my screen is an email address that you're able to drop in uh, your questions as well, and we will be able to respond to them. Uh, our promise is we are committed to making sure that your experience is seamless and we care about uh, your general well being uh, as we put emphasis on uh, healthcare as well. So, having come to uh, 10 30, allow me to appreciate the 600 plus of you who found time to come to this conversation. We appreciate you for joining our first webinar of the year that relates to medical. And I would like to make us aware that we are present uh, on all social media platforms. So you'll find Zamara on Facebook, on Instagram, on LinkedIn, on Twitter, as well as on YouTube. Uh, we have done a number of other webinars uh, in the recent past, especially in relation to the NSSF Act. So feel free to check out our YouTube channel to see that. And most of the questions that you have relating to that will be answered uh, as well. So interact with us through those platforms. Uh, we have more solutions that are able to address your needs as a person. We are able to cover uh, your treasured items and everything that matters to you, uh, you are able to see that information on our other social media platforms. Uh, I would also like to add just to look out for more resourceful and insightful webinars in the near future throughout the year. We'll be doing this periodically to make sure that you are up to date with the trends happening in the medical uh, field. Some of them will be done through uh, your HRs as well. So be on the watch out to join conversations such as this that led to your well-being and especially your health. It's important for us to emphasize that your wealth, uh, your health is your wealth, and that is why we uh, emphasize the need for us to be careful about that. So once again, thank you for making time. Uh, we, I appreciate all the partners that have found time to come, and especially Maurice for making this successful. We wish you a very healthy rest of the year. We will be sharing this recording together with um, uh, the FAQs, the frequently asked questions regarding the app. We will be sharing um, uh, conversations around this app, including the step-by-step -step process on how to download, install, and use the app for your own reference uh, on a future use. Once again, wishing you a healthy rest of the year. Bye for now.